Hello everyone, I'm Gleekles, and today is my very good friend Jennifer's birthday. We are not celebrating her birthday today, we're celebrating her birthday tomorrow, and it's going to be tons of fun. She's doing a 90s retro cosmic bowling, and I'm so excited because we're all going to dress like from the 90s, and oh, I can't wait. It's going to be so fun. I can make her some art, so I'm going to do that. And because of the subject matter, I think it's something that everyone can appreciate. So naturally, I want to share it with you. Now, I did a time-lapse video of me painting Iron Man with watercolors, but I didn't really talk about it. I didn't explain anything. And while the time-lapse video is cool, I really like talking with you guys. I feel like there's more of a connection. I feel like, I don't know, like if I'm not saying anything and you're just kind of watching, it's it doesn't feel like a community or I'm tying in with you guys. I don't know. I would really like to get a setup to where I can film myself and my art at the same time. But right now, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that. Anyways, I will be painting Toothless. I realized, as you may have seen from my sketchbook um, share with you, I said that I never drew Toothless before, and that's kind of like taboo, considering that I've always drawn dragons when I was younger, and I love How to Train Your Dragon, and you know, the style and everything like that, and I can't believe I haven't. I know that Jennifer loves Toothless, so I'm hoping she's really gonna like this. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, so let's paint! Okay, so... Just gonna let you know what I'm using right now before I get started. I use a washcloth instead of, you know, paper towel, and then I just wash them as I go because, um, you know, paper towels is wasting. And it's, the, my paints are watercolor, so they're water-based. So anything that, you know, gets on here is gonna wash off anyways, but obviously I don't wash myself <laughs> with those. This is a kneaded eraser, like I did for my pen sketch, I will lift up some of the lines. I have um, just a basic variation of, you know, typical, no nothing name brand um, paintbrushes. These are like my watercolors, these are that um, company that I was talking about from Fort Lauderdale. They're more than Fort Lauderdale, but that's where I went to school. But Utrecht, and I like painting um, with round, um, synthetic brushes um and i use two and four and then i have a 10 you know for big stuff and then i have very like little detail brushes but i pretty much get everything i need to get done with um two and four and you know eventually like the ends they don't stay so fine they come to a fine point while i'm painting but i do want to invest in you know, better brushes eventually, but working with what I got. And I have my watercolor tray to the side here. I have a love-hate relationship with this. Um, I love it because I can hold several paints in here and I have plenty of room to mix my paint, but yet at the same time, it's big and it's bulky. I also have a straw here for when I have a clear, you know, throwaway container for my water for when I'm mixing paint. I pick up the water and put it in, you know, the tray instead of just trying to constantly pull the water and mix it with my paintbrushes. And that trick I actually learned from my professor. So thank you, Jonathan Hunt. You are awesome. All right, I am going to lift up some of this so it doesn't come off too hard. I already cleaned this up before um, we got this started and if it gets to a point during some of the process where you know I really don't have anything to say about the painting then I will speed forward because I know I do talk a lot. I don't know why but I want to keep this you know at a good quality and you guys are here to see how I watercolor, so that's what you'll get. Okay, so I've lightened up some of the graphite 
so you know you'll still be able to see the lines through the watercolor but then at the same time it's not going to be too overbearing I am going to go back over it in the end with colored pencil once more but uh, that will be last well actually the last thing is the white gel pen I have off-camera a color palette for reference I like using limited color palettes because I feel that they help a piece come together tie together better the less colors you have to worry about and you know the more you can tie things together um, I'm gonna be using a lot of um, obviously with toothless he's a night fury so he's gonna have blues in there um, warm warm purples warm pinks um, maybe a little bit of green and then obviously at black but you don't ever do just direct black you don't ever 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 do direct black because that just doesn't come out so well so the first thing I do is <laughs> I just said I was gonna use this straw to pick up my water and then I started using my brush like a dweeb but the first thing I do is lay down the flats now I've seen a lot of people work in like no particular order um, when it comes to dark to light or light to dark I like to lay down my lightest colors first and then work into dark because you can always paint darkly on top of them but you can't paint light on top of dark when it comes to watercolor so the lightest color um, in this is going to be the inside of his mouth and his yellow eyes so that will be one of the first things that we paint. Now, I don't know if you can see, but I made a very small border over here. Um, and I'm gonna use the side of, normally I have a scrap piece of paper, but I'm gonna use the side right here for convenience as, you know, a little test palette. Um, as I go along, you always wanna have a strip of, you know, test paper that's the same paper that you're painting on right next to you so you know how things are gonna come out. Um, Normally I paint, I've been painting my Canson Mixed Media sketchbook, but this is Strathmore Bristol. Um, it's 9 by 12, but I've got it down so it's a smaller area to work with. But I'm going to lay down the flats, and as I said, I work light to dark. So I go from the lightest color that I'm going to do to the darkest color so that if I get some of you know the light which you can see that I am and that's okay because I enjoy creating a texture and we can paint back on top of it with the darker color um, but toothless he glows when he uses his little night fury powers so I'm gonna capitalize on that just a little bit um, gets a cool little skunk effect going on down his spines so if that is the lightest thing that you're gonna see on him then it is the first thing that I am going to paint you can always you know you can always go darker but you can't go lighter when it comes to watercolors and that's probably why a lot of people don't enjoy watercolors or you know they find them difficult whereas I think painting with the other mediums is difficult um, it's funny how that works. Whereas I think with watercolors, you know, what you see is what you get kind of thing. And I like it for that. Um, I'm not going to do an intricate background on him. I want him to pop and stand out. So I will go with, you know, um, lighter sky colors and let him pop. I wish I would have came up with a more creative pose for him. That's something that I wrote down that I need to work on is uh, more creative poses. But, you know, this isn't, it's not awful. He looks fun. I, he's not stiff at all by any means, which is good. Um, but I would like to go a little more dynamic and less. Boom, this is standard typical walking or running or flying pose 
challenge myself a little bit, you know? Uh, that's a nice neutral little sky color. So this is probably, he's going to be black. Gonna be the lightest other than the blue color that I work with. You'll notice that when I did the Iron Man, I did his skin tone first, because that was the lightest color. And I'm not, I'm not um, worrying too much or being, you know, like too cautious about where I'm putting this because this is going to be like a sky background. So I'm going to make it, what one of the good things of, you know, and how to train your dragon, I mean the sky and the backgrounds and the atmosphere, they're so, oh, they're so flush and colorful and just beautiful so I'm gonna make sure that there's a lot of color back here and this is just one of the layers I'm gonna layer and I'm gonna texture so that's why I'm not concerned with being uh, cautious and making sure that it's you know in the lines or looking straight that's one of the wonderful things that I really love about watercolor is you know it is at times it can be pretty tedious to watch over it and guide it and make sure it's doing what you want it to do but it can also be very forgiving and if you're not stressing over it, it to get the you know to get the desired effect of like texture there's nothing better I mean if anything else the textures that you can create from layering with watercolor are just oh <laughs> my dogs make an appearance through her hair. Her hair, for some reason, is on everything, and I apologize. It's, there's nothing I could do about it. She's everywhere. Um, but the texturing on watercolor is just, I've posted about it before. I just am in love. I can't get enough of it. Okay, so as you can see, even then I'm getting a nice, you know, varied blend, and I'm not worried about it being more saturated or less saturated in other areas, because as I said, I want a texture. Love it. Um, the one thing about watercolors is, before I go back over this, I am going to have to let that dry. A lot of people have a problem with watercolors. I know Tori personally doesn't care for watercolors because she doesn't want to wait. She wants to get into her piece and I totally respect that. It's actually one of the things that I've been really upset with as of recently because I feel like it's taking me way longer to get these paintings done than I would like. But if you would like a way to get your paintings to dry, if you're on a time crunch, you can actually use the blow dryer and it will not hurt your stuff. Um, I'm not gonna use a blow dryer because I'm not in a rush. I wanna take my time. I don't like being rushed at all. It's one of my biggest pet peeves. It puts me in a really, really awful mood. <laughs> I don't think anybody enjoys being rushed, but if you don't mind being rushed and you can adapt in any situation, then more power to you because oh my goodness that I'm sure that ties into anxiety somewhere but anyways I have to leave this alone the back portion it would actually be really wise of me not to paint anything else but because they're so small I will go in and paint his mouth and his eyes and he has beautiful yellow eyes now I don't it's weird of all the watercolors I own I do not have in the tube a yellow in the tube but here's the Grumbacher transportable watercolor that I suggested to somebody who asked on the live stream and this is only I think this is only $25 but you can see they're pretty basic colors but they're very bright and very convenient because I do not have a yellow that is this luminous and it's exactly what I need for his eyes oh yeah that's gonna pop. That's gonna pop real nice. So I, I, I bounce back and forth between palettes and mixing and that's another thing that I really like with watercolors is you can interchange with so many different mediums constantly and they will work with you. I'm not worried about going over the shine in his eyes because that is what the white gel pen is for. Now I chose the blue colored pencil because um, of his little blue ability 
um, and that is kind of like his pop out color. That's his glow. He's like black and then standalone eyes is yellow and then his ability is blue. I'm going to take in some of the yellow and lightly add it in to some areas um, to keep the palette consistent. Again, that's why, you know, it's good to work with a limited palette and dabble it in and it unifies your piece. You know, don't put it in randomly. I mean, this is a sky. You would, you would, <laughs> you can definitely find yellow in a sky. Um, if you're unsure if the colors are going to go together, you can go on your test strip and paint them one right on top of the other or right next to each other and say, yes, that works or no, it does not. And if you're unsure, then do a color study. You're actually supposed to do a color study, but I am not a smart person and I am really lazy and I like to jump right into my stuff. Like, I don't know, I guess, guess I'm son of a badass. Not really, I'm totally, very much not a badass. Um, just lazy and it's awful. You should be doing color studies, you guys. Do not do what I'm doing and not do a color study. Do your color studies. But yeah, I'm gonna go back in, pop his eyes a little more. And then he's got pink tongue. Cute little pink tongue. Mm, I want it to pop more than that. Um, there's, the way I'm painting right now I'm obviously painting um, wet into dry. There's a couple ways of doing it. You can paint wet into wet, and that is actually how Kevin Wada does it. Um, he's currently the artist doing the covers for all of the She-Hulks, and he's a phenomenal, phenomenal watercolor painter, if you haven't checked him out already. But he works wet into wet. Very few people do because it requires extreme patience. So he actually will mix all his colors beforehand, then steadily take and guide and place water down with his brush and then add the pigment and the pigment will spread only to where the water is. It's very tedious. You have to be very controlled. Um, but he gets a very even spread of color. It's only going to go where he put the water. So, I mean, it's worth it in game, obviously, if, you know, you stick with it and do it. I... Um, we'll do wet into wet for like a larger surface area, but with small things like this, I find that I, you know, I have more control or I can go, <laughs> surprise, surprise, I can go faster if I just do this. Wet into wet is obviously very tedious. And it, you need a very strong paper. Like I could not work wet into wet in my mixed media paper. I probably couldn't even do it on this vellum bristol. And that's okay, because I don't, that's, I'm not really, you know, that's not the style of painting I do. But if you did want to do wet into wet painting, you have to get a very heavy and strong um, watercolor paper. Um, at least 140 pounds, um, hot or cold press, but at least. But if you're working wet into wet, you probably want to do more. And you can see that the paper is warping a little bit, but that's okay. I have a special trick for that. I have a special trick. I have tricks. It's fantastic. You learn them, oh no, by sticking your hand and smudging the thing. Oh, oh, oh I do that too. Gotta be careful. Um, let's go in here and get his little gummies. Little gummies. Oh, he's so sweet. I actually, see that's what I'm talking about with it being forgiving. You, you'll see like, I'll go out of the lines and then I won't even watercolor if you're quick. You can actually take your washcloth or like a tissue paper or, um, uh, oh gosh, what are they called? Oh my goodness, brain fart. A Q-tip and hurry up and pull, pick up the uh, paint before it dries and you'll be fine. And if it's still there, you can take a little bit of water on your brush and then rub it and then pick it up and pull it. You'll see some of the yellow from as I got out on his body, but that's okay because the paint that's going there is gonna be way darker. Um, yeah, oh crap, what was I talking about? Uh, talking about his teeth. Oh, I just watched 
the second How to Train Your Dragon with my youngest brother, Nate, like, not even a month ago, because it came out on Netflix. I just never got around to seeing it while I was in theaters. It was not because I didn't want to go or anything. I just never got around to seeing it. Um, and it was amazing. Like, I wasn't really, the previews didn't give away it too much. I mean, you could kind of figure out what was going to happen as for the previews. And of course, Tumblr ruined any sort of mystery that was going to appear during the movie. But that's okay. Um, I think it was phenomenal. And I was really impressed. And well done, Chris Sanders and DreamWorks. Um, but if you haven't seen the second one and you're wary because, you know, sequels don't be because they do a phenomenal job. All right, I'm gonna hit the blue with a second coat and then I'm going to let the paper settle because I put a lot of water in on the back and I will do another color on the back before I go to Toothless because I want the background to be done because he's in front so he's you know he's he's the star he's the main focus so he his whatever paint that seeps off of him needs to be the last thing that you put down let's get your little and here's another problem like you see how this blue is not very bright I can't even use I can't even use the blue that's in the groom rockers blue pigment is so finicky it it's kind of it's like such a butthead it, it, it either turns out gray or it's too dark that's the one thing it's like just one of those pigments um especially for watercolor where it's just really difficult and i don't know maybe i need to invest in you know some more i probably just need to invest in some more expensive pigments and i wouldn't be suffering as much but holy crap to get a decent blue going is ugh, it's it's work um pulling it well, you gotta be really be careful once you i'm working really quickly um but when you're first starting if you've never worked with watercolors before you might want to take your time because it's really all in pushing and pulling the paint and uh, I hate to quote my professor, but she called it babysitting it. And that's more or less what you have to do. You have to babysit it. Um, once you put down the color, you have to guide it to where you want it and where it needs to go. Because then if you let it rest, then it's that's how it's going to dry. And <laughs> that happens to me all the time. I'll start laying some colors down. And then my family wants to call me and I'm like, you guys, I can't. And they're like, why not? It's because I put this paint down and I have to... I have to get it to where it has to be before I can get up. But they don't understand. <laughs> but yeah. Okay, so I'm going to let this dry. And then I'm going to come back and lay in the next color for the background. And then I'm going to work to him. This is all nice and dry. And we have a really cool effect right here. Some people might not like that. But I like that. Um, and I am going to go ahead and add in... More to the background, I'm going to add in a very little bit of, no, maybe I won't. See, I'm testing on the strip over here. I was gonna add some of the blue, but it's not blending well. I'm gonna go in and add some of this um, pink from his mouth though. And then I will get into laying down some flats onto him. Now you might be thinking, oh hey, I have to sit and wait for this to dry. This is really inconvenient. Well, one of the positive things about, you know, the fact that you have to let the watercolor dry is that, well, you get like downtime. You're not, you know, just sitting here for hours on end. Just, well, you can be if you do a lot of layers, but you're not getting lost in you know, just doing this for forever and ever and ever. And, um, you know, a lot of mediums that happens, like you can be sitting with oils and acrylics for hours and hours and hours, and it just takes the life right out of you. And, you know, if you like that, then that's, 
that's cool. I mean, this can take the life out of you too. But what I'm trying to get at is in a positive light, while this is drying, it frees you up a little bit for, you know, to for relax, for a break. Well, what did I do? Uh, while I was waiting for the draw, I went and I got a popsicle. And I went and watched some Markiplier and I just chilled out for a second. There's nothing wrong with chilling out for a second and taking a break. In reality, you should be doing that quite often. You should be giving yourself a breather and stopping and rest. And I think we don't let ourselves um, rest enough. We put a lot of high expectations on ourselves and we need to be relaxing and resting as hard as we work. You know, it, there's nothing wrong with working hard or being a workaholic. I mean, I, my mother's a workaholic. She is always working. She's working her booty off all the time. But you know what? She parties as hard as she works. She knows how to have a good time and she is always busy. She always has something going on and I really admire that about my mom. Um, I am not much of a partier person. Whoops. I will enjoy going bowling and dressing up for the 90s. I am up for that and hanging out with Jen and I don't know if I'm going to know anybody else there, but that'll be okay because we're going to have tons of fun and I'm really excited for that. Um, but yeah, what I was getting to is, you know, on one hand, yeah, I'm not able to complete pieces as quickly as I would like to because I have to sit and wait for this to dry. But on the other hand, part of what I find relaxing about the watercolor is that I can stop and take a breath for a second. <laughs> you know, I'm not sitting here for super long periods of time. I can stop and take a break if, you know, while I'm waiting for it to dry and, you know, clear my mind and not get so intense under the piece. I wonder if this is a little too far away, if I should scoot. I'm just checking the camera really quick. I, think I want you guys to have a good view on this. Like I said before, I'm really sorry I don't have a better setup. Um, my palette is getting off. But, uh, yeah. Let's see. We're getting a really nice, you know, woohoo texture here. Maybe it's time for me to start adding a little bit of control to it. Maybe I can get... He has some speckles on him. Maybe I can get a little bit of speckling in here. Well, I want it to like look like it's um, almost a sky. Like he's flying in the morning or something like that. Just, or, you know, have that correlate to it being a sky, I guess. Um, but most importantly, I want, he's very dark. He doesn't have a whole lot of colors in his uh, palette, in his design. So to make up for that, I want, you know, his background to have a whole lot of colors and be very, I want him to pop out a lot and not be boring. And he's definitely gonna do that. Um, <laughs> Cause we're gonna put black dark on top of the light. But I think we're ready. Now, we're not going to paint him black first. We are going to paint him the lightest color that you will see on him. So the lightest light and then work to the darkest dark. Lighter light, darker dark. <laughs> darker dark. Um, that's just how I work. I've seen a lot of artists in their videos. I've seen them go from light to dark or dark to light and I'm like, whoa, how are you doing that? And I just personally, I like working from light to dark. You do not have to. I just find it is easier. That is just how my mind works. But I'm going to take um, purple and the blue which is a mix of, you know, the pink and, you know, him on the background. And I'm going to make that be, this purpley blue, be the lightest light on him. You know, because, you know, black and gray is very, very dull. 
very plain. And Toothless is not dull and plain. He is bright and lively, and he's a awesome, awesome character. Just going to fill him in. This is going to be, you know, a flat. We're just doing the flats right now. Flat is basically, you know, your first your first line of color. I'm going to rotate him to work easier. Um, but you can do as many washes of these as you see fit. I used to not do so many washes. And I think that was a big problem that I had was I needed to be doing more washes. I wasn't doing enough. And so my colors weren't, weren't popping right. Me specifically, because I've been using the white gel pen to make my pieces pop, I need to create a contrast in colors. And the way to do that is to make sure that I have a very opaque which means, you know, visible, not transparent um, wash of colors down. I'm gonna just blend this into his little glowy blueness here. Yeah. I'm probably not gonna do another wash of this because it is the lightest light and I'm gonna do a couple of, um, I wanna make him, like I said, very colorful. So I'm probably gonna do a couple of different shades. I like to show value with color um, instead of, you know, with shapes or, well, not necessarily that I don't show value with shapes. How should I say this? You know, value is from light to dark, and I like to show shading. I like to shade with color and show my variations with color. Couldn't you tell that I like color? Have I said color enough yet? <laughs> color, color, color. Um, also, while I'm doing this wash, because I'm not working wet into wet, I'm obviously working on the sections on him by shape. And you have to do that, you know, or else you're going to get the paint is gonna dry odd, it's gonna dry weird. And anybody who paints or works with Copics is gonna tell you you need to work section by section, piece by piece, while your stuff is gonna come out funky. You want it to make sure that, you know, it doesn't look like you just took your brush and went shorp, shorp, shorp over the whole canvas. Well, this is not a canvas, this is Bristol. I don't know why I said canvas. But yeah, I think I'm going to fast forward through this because I am just laying down this layer and then I will wait for that to dry before I proceed. All right, now he is all dry. Now I know what you're thinking. Why didn't you turn your light on, Gweek? Cause I freaking forgot. Now I know what you're thinking. This looks like a hot mess right now. And let me tell you, it it is a hot mess right now. Um, Every piece goes through an ugly stage. I had to learn that the hard way in college, I had a really rough time. I would get to this stage and be like, oh my God, I suck so much. This isn't coming out, blah, 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 blah. No, you have to, <laughs> you have to go through this stage. Whoops, sorry. You have to go through this stage, much like anything else in life, to get to the end product. It's not done until it's done. So just bear with me. It looks very messy and sloppy right now, but we're gonna, we're gonna fix that. Don't you worry. All right, so this is the lightest light that is gonna be on him. I think I'm gonna switch. 
like I probably should have done a while ago to my size too. Um, I can just work faster with this. Um, and now we're gonna work in slowly getting him to the darker shade that he is. I'm not gonna do straight black. We're gonna do blues, purples, and the reds that are behind us. Oh, I see why I was using the four now. The two is just blech. Maybe I'll use the two for like smaller areas. I don't know. Um, but we're gonna use the blue. Let's see if I put the blue on top of the purple. That makes it darker. Um, and I think we'll just do a wash of the old blue right there and then for the final darkest dark we'll go in and pull some of that red but not only will that not make him just dull from being plain Jane black but in addition we are unifying the piece by using all the same colors again this is not the only way to do this this is just how I do it because I like to um, I personally enjoy doing it this way. Oh my. There are many ways to paint and this is just this is just one of them. Alright, yep, I'm using the bigger brush. I this this little brush is not gonna do anything for me. Um I'll just be extra careful I guess. So I don't know, I don't know if I want it to be so light. There we go. Okay. So this, I'm going to now start taking into account where my light source is going to be. I think I'm going to have it be coming from above him because he is, well, I intend for him to be looking like he's in the sky flying. I don't know how he's coming across to everyone else. So treating him, once again, like shapes, his spines are going to be dark no matter what. I'm going to be treating him as if he were each part of his limbs like a shape. So this, his foot, an arm like a cylinder, round, and then as it gets closer to light, you will see it'll be lighter. But his nails are just darker anyways, so we're going to go and just fill those in. Under his neck is going to be dark, obviously. Under his little tendrils. But I'm just blocking in shapes. I don't want too much of the purple to show up. Because as I said, it is, I just want it to serve as the lightest color that is on him. So I'm going in and just blocking in shapes of where I think light would break through on him. Also want to keep in mind, you know, how his body shape is. Um, what will and will not look right. Like obviously this part is under his foot, so there's not going to be any light getting there. And his little speckles, those will be fun doing his little, his little spots his, where his, um, <laughs> I am so sorry, I'm so tired. <laughs> Again, surprise, surprise. I don't sleep that well. I have a really hard time getting asleep. Um, so yeah, that is my, that is gonna be my excuse for everything. Why I can't word, I can't brain. Um, his scales, that's what I was looking for. Ding, 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 his scales. Um, I don't know why this area right here won't take to paint. There's something wrong with the paper right there. Um, I don't know what happened to it. Of course, this just so happens to be what I want to give to somebody as a gift. Dang it. But this happens. Stuff happens. See right here? Where like it's 
Nothing's taking to it. I don't know what happened. I didn't do anything. I just drew on it. So I do not know, but I'm just going to keep going with it and just say it gives texture and make it part of the piece because getting frustrated about it, not going to do anything for me. He's got a big belly. He eats lots of fish. It's nice and round and voluptuous. This foot is behind everything else, so it will be darker and not seeing a whole lot of light. A lot of people, um, they like to stylize um, the appendages a lot of times that are in the back and they will and I did the same thing too like um, with the worm that I drew for sketch dailies I did a lot of etching and I almost made completely black the things that were behind the other body parts or the appendages I think that's a really cool technique to use I won't make whatever's behind him completely dark but I will make it darker than everything else and that is a cool technique to use and make the rest of the body parts pop. I like how also they didn't really overcomplicate his wings. They made them really, I will do the darkest, um, I will just make this one wing back here be really dark because it's, it's not really at a position to where there's too much detail in it, but it's they're saying, hey, where's the wing? Well, it's right here. It's just his body's covering it. It's there. Um, but I like how they didn't go too crazy with the wings. Um, and not because they don't know how to handle it, but they didn't really... Like, he's got a lot going on for him already. So, there wasn't really a need to go ham sandwich on his little wings. His little, his face, he's got like a gecko shaped face and his nose and his eye socket are really close to connecting. He's got a round face shape. Typical uh, Chris Sanders style. Just like, he's very similar to Stitch. You can definitely tell who designed these characters. And there's nothing wrong with that, I love it. I absolutely love Chris Sanders. I adore him. I also love that he hopped from Disney to DreamWorks. He's like, well, nice working with you folks. Now I'm going to go work with them too. How cool is that? He's got to do both. Okay. Be really careful because I'm on his face. Now I know you're thinking, oh my god, it's looking even messier now. What are you doing? Don't worry, it's gonna be all right. I promise, I promise this all comes together. At least I hope so. Wouldn't that really suck if I've been being chill this whole time and no, no, no. This is, it's part of the process, it's layering. Even if we were painting with acrylic and oils, all art goes through an ugly stage. And boy, oh boy, because he has a lot of layers and we really want him to pop. He's going to see himself some ugly stages. Because he, especially with his scales, I want to get a really nice, a really nice texture going for him. And there's that and then I'll go in once more with um, some of the pink to give it you know more color and more pop and then I will make the darkest dark I think if the pink doesn't work I might try and combine that and then we'll see but once again I have to let this dry okay now that this is good and dry I'm gonna go ahead and add the red portion and I had no idea that it was 1.30 in the morning. <laughs> that happens a lot, especially when doing pieces like these. Um, but I am so, so tired. And normally, I mean, it's not like I can't 
go until two or three or five o'clock in the morning working on art. But like I said, I don't I don't sleep very well. I kind of give and take with whatever I can get as far as sleep goes. I can fall asleep at like you know lay. I could be tired like this and lay in bed and not be able to fall asleep, or my body will wake me up at like. 8 o'clock in the morning or 9.30 in the morning just just because even if I go to sleep you know at late hours but I don't know I don't know what the deal is but I don't want the point in case I don't want this um piece to suffer because I'm tired um even if I can stay awake or I won't be falling asleep <laughs> despite how tired I am <laughs> um I will not, you know, put the painting in jeopardy just, you know, because I'm getting tired too, especially because this is a gift from my friend. So I'm going to do this wash and then I'm going to continue this tomorrow. And it's okay because, you know, I can't even, <laughs> I can't even post this until after her party because it's a surprise. Shh. But yeah, I'm going to do this wash basically carry on like I was. I'm going to start getting a little more textury because I want to imply his his scales. Um, and so yeah, so I'm going to start getting more textury. And I like, I like the color that it is giving us as we get darker and darker. You may be like, no, 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 you just made him pastel in this. Well, that's, these are the colors that I like. You don't have to work this way. Um, this is just how I prefer. I like um, nice color palettes like this. <laughs> My friends actually make fun of me for continuously using this color palette and I should probably most definitely try using other colors. But I can get away with it because these work well. Specifically for Toothless and making him warm and vibrant instead of just plain. You should never just use just black. Nobody should ever just be black, there you go. I'm just gonna, you know, you wanna imply, obviously, that's the color that he is, and there are colors, there are things that are black, but there's nothing that is like directly black. You have to have some color in there. And yes, it is getting way more messy, but once again, we are working through the ugly stage. Hold the anxiety. <laughs> Hold the anxiety. Alrighty then, so as I'm sure you can see, I am very tired and I do not want that to affect my piece. So I'm making a point in this in the video to remind you that it's okay to stop and continue something the next morning. I personally know people who work on several projects at a time and take months to finish pieces. Everybody's different, so don't compare yourself to anybody else. It's okay to stop and say, okay, you know what? I'm gonna finish this tomorrow, especially if it means the difference between making yourself, you know, strain yourself and then also ruining something that you've put so much time into already. But, um, little fun fact, totally broke one of my light bulbs that I was using, so that's fun too. Such a butterfingers. Um, but yeah, I will continue this and let that dry in the morning. Welcome back everyone. It is a new day and while I am not necessarily well rested, I did get some rest and I'm ready to finish Toothless. Um, I, now that I've had some sleep, I realized 
maybe I've done enough with the watercolors and I want the darkest dark to be made with my colored pencils. And obviously that is my final step before the white gel pen. And it's what really brings everything together and not makes this look like such a hot mess. And if I decide that I do want more watercolors on here, I can go back with that. But I'm probably going to use the colored pencil and make him look dark and make that the darkest point in the piece. Um, that being said, I thought while I was looking for the correct colors to show you, I found these and I thought this was pretty hilarious. Uh, I think I can uh, still squeeze some life out of these puppies. I think it's pretty funny that I've used these up at this point, but it's like, I want to keep using them, but there's almost like nothing to grip onto. It's, it's funny and it's sad at the same time, um, especially because I cannot get any more out of these purples, and obviously I'm using them the most. I can't find my very dark, my very dark purple that I had in my second pack of pencils which I had to buy and I'm pretty sad about this it's up and disappeared but for this I'm going to selectively go back and forth between these Prismacolor Colorize pencils the black like as I said I'm not gonna ever do straight up black but I will use this to go and then fine tune and hone in the blue for his um, mouth and like the glowy port of <laughs> ports the glowy parts I will be using the blue for that and then the purple to accentuate. Let me make sure you can see if over here on the test thing how it's gonna look. That's why it's always important to have a test sheet. Now this is a watercolor tutorial so I don't want to spend too much time. Well this isn't a tutorial. I don't know what would I what I really call this. A guide or a step by step? I don't know. I'm gonna I'm going to be sitting on my computer while I'm editing <laughs> for a while figuring out what to call this. I spend forever on little things like that. But anyways, um, I don't want to spend too much time on this because the point of this was to show you my watercolor process, but this is a very key point in my process and it is where I move to tie everything together, so I do want to show you this um especially because of my paintings it's mixed media it's not just watercolor i'm using a lot of different mediums with this um but as you can see what i do is i make varied lines varied line weights um to give it you know that character of my under sketch and I go in and I will lightly do light shading here and there um, where necessary and try not to push too hard with the pencil like if you need to make it darker go back over it you don't ever want to really push um, I wasn't doing this before but um, I watched in Tori's videos Tori Ann or Juicy Ink on um, YouTube, she actually, for hers, over her Copics, she'll take it and she will um, smudge it and she will use a Q-tip. And I do have Q-tips, but I've already started this and you can actually, you're not going to get, you know, as refined, but if you want to smudge, I found, I just testing, obviously, I, I do a lot with my fingers, like move and push paint, but you can do that as well. So the smudge thing, you know, they tell you not to smudge in school, but they do have, you know, those little smudge sticks. If you work with graphite, then you'll know that you can find a smudge stick and use that. But I don't think that's needed for this. You can um, smudge these and these are just, the Prismacolors are just the Colorace. Before I didn't really care for Prismacolors. I thought they were very waxy. And I didn't like, you know, how quickly they broke when I went to sharpen them. They, these obviously, you, you go through these in like no time. That is the one, the one problem with them. Um, not the one, there's probably more, but that's one of the main problems if I have any that I have with them is that 
they just bust and break and you are they're getting used up constantly and i have been doing a lot of drawing and arguably you know that's that's the price you pay when you're doing traditional art you're using supplies um but they do i do go through them very quickly and so you got to be prepared you know you, you want a very decent you want a very decent sharpener that's not gonna hurt your stuff and just make you shed all of your money, basically, into sharpening. But they are very forgiving. You can smudge with them. They blend wonderfully with watercolors. They blend wonderfully with Copics. If you have any other mediums that you know that they blend well with free feel free to let me know and i will check them out um they do do well with do do i said you do they do do well with the um i need to quit saying um it's like a, a disease um th oh, there it is um it's like they do well with the Stadletter fineliners. I keep mentioning that and then yet I still have not made a video for those. I will. I will make a video for the fineliners and I will show you. But they do well with them as well. And I'm gonna blend this a little bit. I will go in and make his little scales. Yeah, the fun part. I'm gonna have to go back over it very lightly um, with the black to accentuate, you know, the darkest darks, but I'm not going to overdo it. And this is a process. This takes, as Tori's mentioned many times, she's absolutely correct. Um, this does take a while because it's, you know, tedious and your, but the end result, see what happens when you press too hard? It's those deep-seated anger issues again. Um, they, they take a while, but the end result is well worth it. You know, nothing, nothing worth anything is ever easy. So it's, you know, if you have any, you know, as time, as time goes by, you'll get more acquainted with it and it won't take you so long. I know Tori says it's tedious and it takes her a while, but I'm following her on Snapchat while she updates and does these pieces, and she is flying. She's absolutely flying like a bat out of hell with these. But she is an art machine, I call her. That's my nickname for Tori. Um, she is. She goes so fast, and she just pumps out art like a machine. She's incredible and a fantastic inspiration. Um, so just like with anything else, like I was moving pretty fast, I think with the watercolors, with a giant brush that was way too big than what I should have been using, but you know, with practice, just like with anything else in life, the more you use it, the better you'll become, the more comfortable you'll be with it, and the faster you'll get. Since this will take me a while, I think I will speed this process up. Unless I end up having anything else to say, then I will stop. But we will just go through this.
Well, that's it. That's how I make my watercolor pieces. And um, I don't want to spend too much time on the colored pencil part because I am obviously trying to make the main focus of this, how I do the watercolor portion of my painting. But I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you learned from it. I hope I answered any questions. I hope it was helpful. And I hope you enjoyed Toothless. I'm really happy with how it came out and I hope Jen really loves it for her birthday. Woohoo! Happy birthday, Jen! I'm gonna leave some links below so you can find Jen um, or Jennifer. She has amazing art amazing art and she's super talented and super sweet so you definitely need to check her out but i hope you guys like this video leave me some comments leave me some feedback let me know what other kinds of things you'd like to see and check out some of these other videos maybe some of these maybe you know doo -doo -doo -doo. <laughs> i don't know i clearly need way more caffeine oh Thank you guys so much for watching.